This is St. Louis Cardinals baseball. And this afternoon from Oriole Park at Camden Yards, game number two of the interleague series, the St. Louis Cardinals and the Baltimore Orioles. And along with the mad Hungarian Al Rabowski, I'm Dan McLaughlin. Scott Warman is with us as well. The Cardinals an offensive explosion last night with five home runs. Most they've hit in the game this season. And the Cardinals also getting great production from the top of the lineup. That means Matt Carpenter, number one. In the two spot, it's Dexter Fowler. Yeah, you just have to admit that once they moved these two around, they have really responded. Dexter has increased his batting average by 130 points. You see the production with the home runs and RBIs, and he and Carpenter lead this ball club in home runs and RBIs by far. Both Carpenter and Fowler with home runs last night. Adam Wainwright gets the call today against Wade Miley, the lefty of the Orioles. Do the bats keep on rolling? We're about to find out. Game two coming up on Fox Sports Midwest. Big crowd is here. A Saturday afternoon of baseball comes your way next.
by Bud Light, famous among friends. By Chevy Silverado, the most dependable, longest lasting, full size pickups on the road. Find yours at your local Mid America Chevy dealer. And by Menards, save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. Oreo Park at Camden Yards. Glad that you're with us. Saturday baseball here on Fox Sports Midwest, along with Al Roboski. I'm Dan McLaughlin. Scott Warman is with us as well. Built into the warehouse, this beautiful ballpark opened in 1992 and celebrating their 20th, 25-year uh, anniversary this season. The Orioles are 32 and 34, and now six and a half games back in the American League East. And the St. Louis Cardinals are 31 and 35, and St. Louis four and a half out in the Central Division. The 30-year-old from Louisiana, Wade Miley, the lefty, getting the call today for the Orioles. See his two and four record. Very tough on the left-handed hitters. He, like uh, all the starters for the O's, have really struggled going deep into a ball game. His last two starts, he never got through the third inning. The Hyundai pitch arsenal, fastball, slider, changeup, and curve from the lefty. So Wade Miley goes today. You see the uniforms with the blue for both teams in honor of Father's Day. For the second consecutive year, teams are wearing the blue unis incorporated in the logo, the socks, the wristbands, and that's to raise money and awareness for prostate cancer research. The Cardinals lineup, the designated hitter today is Matt Carpenter, followed by the switch hitting Dexter Fowler in center. He was the DH last night. Then Jose Martinez, Jed Jerko, Yadier Molina, Aledmis Diaz, Tommy Pham, Chad Huffman, his first start, and Paul DeYoung. Dobbs Tire and Auto Center's defense, Hunsu Kim in left, Adam Jones in center, Seth Smith is in right field. It's Machado, Hardy, Scope, Mancini on the infield, and Wellington Castillo is behind the plate. Cardinals with the win last night snapped their eight game road losing skid. And when you look at Wade Miley, made 13 previous starts and only 65 and two thirds innings. So the first pitch to Carpenter is taken for a ball and we are underway. Carpenter picked up his 40th walk of the season last night. He's ninth in the National League. Paul Goldschmidt leads with 47. We showed you that Miley very tough on left handed batters, but Carpenter is the exception. Great numbers against Miley. He's six for 11, two doubles, a couple RBIs. Lefty's hitting just 167 this year off of Wade Miley. And of course, since he's moved to the Leadoff spot. He's hit in 10 straight ball games with a lot of production. 10 straight, the average 447, four home runs. He's driven in 11. And he's also had seven consecutive games with an extra base hit. Last night, home run, single, a couple of walks. And the count runs to three and two. You know, Matt is always so good at being patient and working the count. But that is one thing with Miley. You know, he's trying to make perfect pitches and usually falling behind the count. And it's a leadoff walk to start this contest. It brings in Dexter Fowler. He was on base three times last night. Walk, home run, single, and drove in a pair. Switch hitting Dexter Fowler on the right side, just 217, but good success against Miley also. Hopefully, his 1 2 can set the tone for again. Wade Miley in his last start, six runs on six hits, walked two. That was just in two and a third. Lost to the White Sox on Monday. Did not record a strikeout. Our Toyota keys to the game. 
58.7% strikes thrown, lowest rate in the big leagues. You do have to be aware of his pickoff move. He's got a very good one. One ball and one strike. Well, he's picked off 26 batter or 26 runners since the start of uh, 2011. And the 1 1 pitch. Take it high really rush that delivery with a quick pitch to the plate. Yeah, Dan you know when you do that uh, slide step. You're trying to do that to, to control the running game but usually. You have what resulted it's a ball because they rush the throw they don't. Uh, that should out of play and yeah, the ball end up be high in the strike zone. Usually above the strike zone. Miley in his second season with Baltimore last year with the O's he went two and five. He was acquired from Seattle for lefty Ariel Miranda. He's pitched with Arizona for four years, Boston, Seattle, and now here with Baltimore. And a swing and a miss. So the strikeout of Dexter Fowler in the first out recorded in our game. Missouri Lottery Fox Tracks tied him up. Yeah, really that good cutter underneath the hands of a right handed batter. There's Jose Martinez. He moves up to the third spot in the lineup today. He'll play first base with Carpenter as the DH. Two hits in game one and a real key at bat in the sixth inning last night. Uh, ten pitch at bat. Got a double and knocked out the starter. After that, there were three consecutive hits, and the Cardinals cruise to an easy game one win. Fastball misses low, two and zero the count. Two zero pitch, hit out of play. Two balls and one strike. Here's the at bat last night, a key at bat against Kevin Gossman. Game was in reach at this point for the Orioles. But then Martinez would fall away a couple of pitches. Some thought he had struck out on that pitch. He didn't. Then eventually goes the other way for a, a base hit into right. It was four to one at that point. They made the pitching change. And then the first pitch, Paul DeYoung got a RBI base hit after that. And Cardinals had a little bit of fun going. Carpenter with Homer, Dexter Fowler, solo shot. Five home runs in the game as Martinez looks at a ball low. So Miley has walked two of the first three he has seen. For Baltimore, they've lost seven of their last eight. The starters are one and eight with an ERA that's at 12. They're averaging just four and a third during these eight games. In June, to take it even further, the ERA is nine. So they're not getting starting pitching. Last nine games, they failed to keep the opposition under five runs. Here's Jed Jerko. Struck out three times last night. A walk and then a solo home run in the ninth to right field. Out to visit goes Castillo. Jerko what else? A solo home run. And again, he goes the opposite way. Short porch and right. He used it. And for Jed Jerko, home run number nine late in that game. Yeah, that was the ninth inning right there. Let's get him over this uh, little funk that he's on that all of his home runs are solo shots. Let's let's have a three run blast. Get a big nice lead before Wainwright even throws a pitch. Jerko batting 323 on the road and 294 overall. Tops on the club. Runners at first and second. Fastball and a strike.
pulled foul and two strikes. Here's a one two pitch. The all time record by the way for starting a season all solo home runs was set back in 1966. Felipe Alou is 17 solo shots to begin that year. Jerko at nine. The two two. And a fly ball lifted out to right. Seth Smith with the catch. Runners stay put and there's two away. Yadier Molina is hitting 257 with six home runs and he's driven in 23. Last night there was a pretty good contingent from Puerto Rico that were all Molina fans. Outfield is straight away in the first pitch. Molina hits it sharply to second and right through scope in the center field. Carpenter will score and it's one nothing Cardinals. Hard hit ball and Jonathan Scope couldn't come up with it. And it's one nothing St. Louis. I wonder if the second base umpire screened him a little bit. But you're right it was hard hit but this is the big league level and at least has to be knocked down to keep the Cardinals from scoring. See where the second base umpire is. Might have gotten a short hop that just really gave him problems. It's ruled an error and the ninth on scope this season. See where he was backpedaling. You know, when you backpedal on a ball, then you're in trouble. The strike to a led Miss Diaz originally scored with two hits. But his base hit originally in the seventh taken away the oddest of base hits it would have been. Ball that was. Out of play rolled back in play. And a grounder that's hit to short J.J. Hardy to scope for the force the Cardinals. Pick up a run on a hard hit ball by Yadier Molina to score Matt Carpenter one nothing St. Louis Wainwright to the mound when we come back. Adam Wainwright making his fourth start of the year number 267 of his career seven game winner and coming off a win last time out. Hyundai pitch arsenal varies up the speeds of that entire resume that you see there the fastball the curve the cutter and the change. Interesting to see. You know, how that percentage of cutters is cut down. And say the last uh, seven eight starts. He's gone more to the curveball in his signature pitch. 
and then varying speeds on it. First time he's ever faced the the Baltimore Orioles. With this pitch, he will now have faced every major league team. He's beaten every one, with the exception of the Yankees, Minnesota, Cleveland, and Texas. The first pitch, a ball to Seth Smith. He'll lead it off, and then Machado and Jones, Trumbo, Mancini, Scope, Castillo, Kim, and Hardy. Smith was acquired in the offseason from Seattle for Yavani Gallardo. He's now in his 10th Major League season. Ground ball that's hit to Paul DeYoung for out number one. Around the Horn is presented by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers, Pham Fowler and Huffman in the outfield, Jerko, Diaz, DeYoung, Martinez on the infield, Molina behind the plate, and Wainwright is on the mound. Here's Manny Machado. Batting just 212. A year ago, he hit 37 home runs, 96 RBIs, and had a 294 average. Arguably, would you say he's the first, second, maybe third best uh, defensive third baseman in all of baseball? Sure. Most teams, he'd be their shortstop. Drops down a bunt. One ball and one strike. Machado was the number three overall pick in 2010. It went Bryce Harper, Jamison Tyon, and then Manny Machado. The Cardinals that year, 2010, took a third baseman from the University of Arkansas, Zach Cox, and they traded him away to the Marlins for Edward Mojica. Mojica became an All Star in St. Louis. Remember, Cox uh, really had trouble making conversion from the aluminum bats to the wooden bats, and yet they were able to uh, trade him, and Mojica did an outstanding job for us for a couple of years. Fouled back. Cardinals don't often make mistakes, do they? Mitchell Boggs was the closer that year. Mojica was working out of the pen, pitching in the seventh and the eighth inning. Just didn't work out. Ryan Franklin was also part of that equation, and uh, Mojica became the guy that uh, started closing games out, did very well. A swing and a miss, and a strikeout for Adam Wainwright. Watch the body language of Chadro and everything else, and you almost feel like this is the first time he's ever failed at any level. You know, sometimes it's good to fail in the minor leagues because you know how to get out of it. But to do it here at the big leagues and never done it before, it'll take you a little while. Adam Jones, five time All Star, has won four gold gloves. Good player. Curveball. Taken inside for ball one. 71 miles an hour there. We'll see how he changes speeds with that curveball and makes it more than one pitch. Adam Jones, when he broke into pro baseball, not in the big leagues, was actually a shortstop and then moved to the outfield with the Mariners and then traded to Baltimore for Eric Bedard. That's a great deal for the Orioles. The deep left center field. Fam on the move, and it is gone. Adam Jones with home run number 12, and this game is tied 1 1. And in curveball. Yachty, the pitch before, really wanted him to throw a ball with the slider outside of the strike zone. He just got it off the end of the bat. Then this pitch, he still, I think he preferred to have it be a ball, and there's the hanging breaking ball. See a hitter like that, and he launches one for that vertical you know, swing and everything else. And you know, in this ballpark, it's going to be gone. Mark Trumbo led the league in homers with 47 last year. 
Jones with home run number 12, RBI number 31. Trumbo is not homered since June 1st, a span of 55 at bats, and hitting only 173 during this stretch. It puts fear in you. Out to center. That's well hit. Fowler going back at the wall, and it's gone. I thought Dexter was thinking he was going to catch that ball. At least he gave some indication that he was felt like he'd be close to it. I'll tell you how strong Trumbo is. This ball's up and in a little bit. Kind of jammed in a little bit. Now Dexter's going back. Looks like he's getting ready to jump, but he ran into the wall. Now it was clearly over. But I I don't think he realized he was so close to the wall and when he tried to jump he ran into the back of it. So back to back home runs here's Trey Mancini. Writing a seven game hit streak is Mancini. Eleven for his last twenty six with a couple of home runs. Trumbo last year led the major leagues with forty seven home runs that was number nine. Good curveball and it's nothing in two. There are six pitchers in the National League with seven wins. One of those, Adam Wainwright. Zach Greinke, Max Scherzer, both with eight. Sensatella, Kershaw with nine to lead the National League. And the one two pitch. Brown ball that's hit to third. Jed Jerko across the diamond. So it's back to back home runs for Buck Showalter's club. The first Adam Jones, his 12th of the year. And then Mark Trumbo to center, number nine. And with that, a 2 1 O's lead after one. Two one our score back to back homers by Jones and Trumbo. Tommy Pham up the middle scope ranging to his right takes a hit away nice play by Jonathan scope. I think that was more indicative of the type of defensive player scope is he got a really pretty good defense in infield here. Well, had something on that throw from the outfield grass. Here's Chad Huffman. 
And a ball low. Huffman is two for six with a triple. First start. The major leagues this year. Huffman hasn't had a start in the big league since 2010 when he was briefly with the Yankees. And the 2 0. Three balls and no strikes. Cardinals got their run in the first without the benefit of a hit, so be patient in that batter's box. 2,541 days between starts in the major leagues for Chad Huffman. Just in case you were wondering, right? Puts it in perspective, it's been a long time. Yeah, long time before he had hits at the major league level. Three and one the count on Huffman. Slowly hit to third, Machado gloves and makes the play. The BJC Healthcare Difference Maker, the bottom of the lineup in game one. Tommy Pham, Jose Martinez, and Paul DeYoung all contributing in a big way. Paul DeYoung really did. Three RBIs, a home run, three hits from that nine spot. Joined Bob Gibson and Dizzy Dean. The only Cardinals to ever do that out of the nine hole. Carlos Martinez did the rest. Carlos again dominant last night. He's now third in innings, fourth in opponents average, and third in strikeouts. Very good in picking up the win. Would have gone deeper in that ball game, but Cardinals had the big, big lead. Get a couple of guys some innings out of the bullpen. A good Cardinal win. Here's a 1-1. Probably a good spot for DeYoung to be in eighth or ninth. Takes a little pressure off. Probably feeling pressure anyway. Young player here at the big leagues. 2 1 pitch. You think about it too, Dan. You know, a lot of people or a starter will look at that lineup and say, this guy, this guy, I got to watch out for. There's my outs here. And oh, he's a ninth place hitter. Oh, I probably can just throw strikes at him and he'll get himself out. Well, he's got some pop in his bat. The 2 2. Show you that graphic of how few strikes these throws. There's the lowest percentage. Third walk issued by Wade Miley. So two out walk extends the inning to Carpenter. Kubota power stats the Cardinals with five home runs as we mentioned earlier in game one of this series. And there they are including Carpenter a two run shot. Trying to extend his hitting streak to 11. The young back in safely. Prior to this great run that Carpenter is on, his average was at 209. Then he switches to leadoff and it's jumped up to 250. And during his 10 game hitting streak, he's added 220 points to his average. Batting 447 in the streak. Here's an 0 1 pitch to Carpenter. Misses down and in. The bright orange of the Orioles here at the ballpark and their fan base. Long history of baseball here. 
The 1 1. Carpenter hits it to first, and Mancini steps on the bag. The Yankees can actually thank the Orioles for baseball in New York. I'll tell you about that when we come back. Martinez more on that let's check in with Scotty all right Danny thanks so much you guys just alluded to it how good he was last night you know one of the things during this great run for Carlos Martinez as he's been really relying on that slider in fact almost half of his pitches 40 of 92 of his pitches last night Danny were via the slider in fact seven of the eight strikeouts via the slider and for Carlos Martinez we asked Mike Matheny before today's game has that been a pitch that has evolved. He says it's already been dirty, but now it's even evolved even more. He can Danny change speeds on it, and especially it's wicked for a right-hander because it can go in so many different areas that for right-handers it just really ties them in knots. And obviously it's been working uh, right up to par right now as he's been sensational, including the win last night with his eight strikeouts in the Cardinals' victory. Base hit for Scope. To me, he's always had it against the righties. He's now getting out lefties equally as well. As he was the right handers. Then he was even talking about he's learned to throw a backup slider. Now, most people will tell you that right handed batters say that's the toughest pitch for them is a backup slider, but most people say it happens by accident. You overthrow it, right? And you, you, and you get underneath it a little bit, and, and really, you know, like when you talk about a good one, it just dives down and away, moving away from a right handed hitter. The backup one literally kind of rides up and in and ends up being up and into a right handed batter. A very tough spot to hit. Here's a 1 0 pitch to Wellington Castillo. Good numbers against Wainwright, 8 for 22 with three doubles. Before they were the Yankees, they were the Orioles. Baltimore was last in the National League. In 1899, they moved to Brooklyn. Baltimore then had an American League uh, team for two years. That collapsed. And many of those players went to New York with a team in the American League, the Highlanders. They were formed in 1913. They became, you guessed it, the Yankees. Yankee fans travel so well here, too, to Baltimore and pack this place. The Bronx Bombers are here. The 2 1 pitch. And then you have Jeffrey Mayer. <laughs> most people tell that story because most people don't know what you're talking about. 1996 turned out to be a home run. Jeffrey Mayer, a young man, a boy at that time, right field at the Bronx, the porch. Reaches over the wall and catches the baseball on what would have been 
a catch for Tony Tarasco who was the right fielder at that time for the Orioles turns out to be a home run a difference maker in the series and all of a sudden the Yankees go on to win the World Series and unlike Buckman he became a celebrated hero <laughs> right <laughs> good point one guy gets a souvenir and it's a foul ball this guy takes a home run away and he gets a parade go figure so walk to Castillo and it's Hun Su Kim highly decorated player in the Korean Baseball Association won a batting title in 2008 four time gold glover before coming over to Baltimore. Hit 302 last year for Baltimore but and now it didn't come without you know, a little bit of a distraction at the beginning of the season he had a two year deal that he signed to come over here. The Orioles actually wanted to start him in the minor leagues and he refused the assignment. And so per his contract over seven million dollars they kept him. To begin the year. And Molina wants to go visit. You know last start for Adam Wainwright. He picked up his seventh win. It was a six five victory over the Phillies. He allowed two runs through 50 pitches in the first two innings and then after that settled in got through five Fowler hit a three run homer took him off the hook and the bullpen held that lead but that's how he picked up the win but he was at least initially not very sharp it wasn't very sharp and like you said he did finish with like three shutout innings and he was out of that ball game and then Dexter and the teammates got him, got him the lead and end up getting the win with five innings. Two balls and no strikes. After today, he needs two more games to tie Lindy McDaniel, ninth place in Cardinals history, on the all time games pitched list. Lindy McDaniel was a right handed pitcher for fans who don't know he pitched for eight different teams Cardinals in the mid 50s early 60s and the ultimate setup man he holds the record in Major League Baseball most batters faced in the eighth inning over his career. Yeah but you're talking about here a starter right who's surpassing all these relievers curveball and just missed. That's why I brought it up. I mean, you think about a yeah. guy that starts as opposed to relieving all the time. It's been a long career for Wainwright. I wasn't going to bring that up because he passed me a couple of games ago. <laughs> I let that go too. So runners at first and second, nobody out, three and two the count. High chopper foul. First base coach is Wayne Kirby. Bobby Dickerson is at third. And lady commits an error. Whoops. Don't have to run after it. Catch it. Three-two pitch again. And a ground ball hit to the right side. DeYoung will go to second. Staying on the back, barely Diaz. Runners at first and third with one down. You got the double play in order. Sometimes you really don't want to see. Well, that second baseman, it's a much easier play going to first, but it's the proper play. Take the slow hit ball, not really a double play ball, but to get that out at second base. You have runners at the corners now, and you have that ability to get a double play and keep them from scoring. Here's J.J. Hardy batting 207, three homers, and he's driven in 18. He has the most at bats against Wainwright. And he was playing shortstop for the Brewers, 26 at bats. It's five for 26 against him. 
He was with Milwaukee, then traded for Carlos Gomez to Minnesota, and then picked up by the Orioles. Always liked him. Me too. I always thought he was a, you know, kind of an underrated player. Steady. Yeah, steady, and just does his job, and nobody really notices him, but uh, good, steady player. Well, one pitch. With the occasional pop too, especially in this ballpark. We were talking last night about that power alley out in left center, and you look at those home runs, like particularly the one from Trumbo, would be on the warning track in most ballparks. Here's a one-one. Two strikes on Hardy. Wainwright on the road is two and three. ERA is over seven. Much better at home. And Miley, his counterpart for the O's, is the same way. Much better at home than he is on the road. When that cutter is sharp, this is the kind of guy that Wainwright may go middle, outer half. Get him to reach and to get the ground ball or the strikeout. There's a look at the splits for Adam Wainwright. And that last cutter just kind of really sat there. Didn't really have a lot of movement at all. But it was far enough away that he'd get it off the end of his bat. One two pitch. Curveball and a base hit into left center field. One run is in. This will go all the way to the wall. They'll wave in another. Hardy to second. Two run score. And Baltimore with a 4 1 lead. That's the curveball here, and you see it hanging up. Starts around the letters, but ends up about belt high, and those usually are going to be hit and hit hard. It's also a one two count on the ninth place hitter. Yeah. You know, you know, I'm not second guessing selection. You're just second guessing or first guessing location and execution of the pick. So it brings in Scope and Kim. Back to the top of the lineup in Seth Smith. Smith lines it to DeYoung. Two outs, and the batter will be Manny Machado. Talking with those that really follow the Orioles day in and day out, they think it's going to be awfully tough for Baltimore to keep Machado. Not going to be a free agent until after next year. And he and Bryce Harper are going to be the marquee players. What would his value be at this year's trade the deadline for a contending team that could get him for the remainder of this year and next year? A couple games under 500, and so they're going to be their fate will be determined in the next what six weeks or so. Machado drives it into left center. And it's gone into the bullpen it goes and a two run homer for Manny Machado. Third home run hit by the Orioles were only in the bottom of the second. And Dan that's the one thing about Adam Wainwright he's one of the best pitchers in all of baseball and not allowing home runs. Coming into this action today it only allowed five home runs and three have been hit today. Absolute rocket here. Yeah, just a line drive. It just, I watched Fowler. I just expected him to go after it, but he could tell that that had enough height that it was going to get over the wall, but I got out of here quickly. That is more indicative of the player he is than that low batting average. So two runs in the first and four here in the bottom of the second. Adam Jones hits it out of play.
offense coming into today. Common theme, all very good pitchers. They keep the ball in the ballpark. He said he only allowed five home runs in his 70 plus innings coming in today and three already. But this is a ballpark that, boy, you know, you just, you can make decent pitches, and, but you're never rewarded for it. Here's the 0 2. Wainwright had not allowed a home run with a curveball all year long until today. The 2 2. Jones is hit by the pitch. Well, you got him running around the ankle, maybe. Jones trying to put. The knee has got that guard on it, but that's more for the shin. Didn't really move, did he? Because he didn't think it was going to hurt like this either. Last year, the Orioles popped 253 home runs. 15 in the history of baseball to have 250 or more. Last four years, they've had the league leader in home runs. Nelson Cruz, Chris Davis twice. He's on the DL with an oblique. And this man a season ago, Mark Trumbo. Solo home run back in the first inning. So two outs, runner at first. Tyler Lyons is throwing in the Cardinals pen. Trumbo's faced Adam now four plate appearances and has two home runs against him. Here's a 1 0 pitch. Trumbo, a liner into right field. Jones gingerly running around the bag at second, stops there. Four hits in the inning. They just go to second base and watch right there. The ninth hitter is Mancini. Riding that seven game hitting streak, rounded out to third to end the first. First time up. He's an eighth round pick out of Notre Dame. Went back to school to finish up his degree in political science. I mean, seen him been playing left field, and Kim was the odd man out, but uh, with Chris Davis on the DL, and see he goes back to his normal position, and that's first base. Well, if you're a Cardinal fan, you're saying, you know what? Wade Miley hasn't exactly been setting the world on fire here, yeah. and their bullpen is beat up. They are missing two of their best bullpen pieces, Zach Britton and Darren O'Day. So get out of this inning and regroup. Britton was 47 for 47 in saves last year, had an ERA at 0 0.5, 3 or 4, or something like that. Just a tremendous year. He's going to go out on a rehab assignment on Monday, and then O'Day was the one of the very best setup men, eighth inning men in all of baseball. So you're right about that bullpen. If you can get into it, you're not out of this game, even though you're trailing by five. A lot of time left. Here's a one-two. 
It's sharply and pass Diaz into the gap in left center. Still rolling and all the way to the wall. Two runs will score. Mancini drives in two. it for Adam not the game we expected I thought that's it for Wainwright as the rain starts to fall it's our Chevy call to the pen. Back in Baltimore in just a moment. One of the doubleheader against Milwaukee, three scoreless innings to finish it up, and he picked up a save. And the Cardinals are going to need some innings from him here this afternoon. Wainwright lasted an inning and two thirds. The Hyundai pitch arsenal, very good breaking ball, throws that fastball about 45% of the time. And this is this is the role that Tyler Lyons is to assume. And we hope we don't see him too often, but he is the guy to come in here, be a long man, eat up some innings. Restore a little bit of order. Five hits already in the inning. Eight to one our score as the rain is falling here at Camden Yards. And the 1 0 pitch. Second game this season in which Wainwright is allowed six or more earned. The other was back on June 6th against Cincinnati. And just the eighth time in his career, allowing three or more home runs. One ball and two strikes. That was a good numbers in his career. He's been up and down the last three or four years. Much better in relief. Lined into right field, base hit. Throw by Huffman. It's too late. That's 9 1 now, Baltimore. Close the book on Adam. 
second hit in the inning for Jonathan Scope. Out over the plate, takes it to right field. So for Adam Wainwright, it's his shortest outing of his career. Inning in two thirds, seven hits, nine runs, one strikeout, walked one, and gave up three home runs. And the one one. The one thing that teams have done, and Scott talked about it, the usage of the slider against the Orioles. A lot of teams throwing breaking pitches to Baltimore, and you thought maybe that could be a positive today for Adam Wainwright, but just didn't have it. Throw it and you got to have it in good location. See if you get another slider down. And you get into hitters' counts when you fall behind, three and one. Two balls and two strikes. And a strikeout of Wellington Castillo. Big inning for the Orioles. Manny Machado, this two run homer, his 13th. It was all game one, St. Louis. So far, all O's in game two. As the Orioles sent 11 men to the dish in the bottom of the second, Arkea in the driver's seat, Carpenter and Fowler, and these two doing some damage since uh, June 7th. Fowler leads it off, followed by Jose Martinez and Jed Jerko. Miley has walked three. Cardinals still searching for their first base hit. Well, like we said, we got. Six innings to come back. Round ball that's hit left side. Manny Machado makes the play. And there's one away. Margaritaville night is coming up. 
It's June 23rd. You'll receive that shirt pregame concert. And it's all coming up and those tickets can be yours at Cardinals.com slash theme. Margaritaville night. A walk to Jose Martinez back in the first. And he looks at strike one. Now they walked two of the first three batters he faced. Oh, one pitch. Cincinnati is tied with the Dodgers. That's in the top of the third. And today, the Reds unveiled a statue of Pete Rose outside the Great American Ballpark. And he was allowed on the field for the third consecutive year. Major League Baseball allowed him on the field for the All Star game. That is number retired last year. And today, the Statue dedication. 19 of his 24 seasons spent with the Reds. He was their rookie of the year, won an MVP and a World Series MVP as well, all in Cincinnati. He's traded straight up for Tom Lawless. Pete also was denied as he was asking to be reconsidered for the National Hall of Fame. That was denied again. Ball third strike on Martinez. Second strikeout for Wade Miley. We're participating in the home run challenge. Every home run and strikeout in this game raises money for prostate cancer research. Since June 1st, $3.3 million have been raised in the challenge. Make a pledge by going to homerunchallenge.org. That's the positive of today. The three home runs allowed make significant contribution to a worthy cause. Had six home runs last night. Five by the Redbirds. If you're just joining us and wondering about the uniforms, that's for recognition, awareness, looking for donations. The prostate cancer group and wearing the blue for Father's Day this weekend around Major League Baseball. Well, today was Adam Wainwright facing the Orioles for the first time ever in his career. Shortest start ever, inning and two thirds. Matched his career highs for runs allowed nine, home runs allowed three. Only team he hasn't faced, the St. Louis Cardinals. Jerko fly to right back in the first inning. And the 3 1. Popped up to the right side. Mancini looking for help and slipping is Seth Smith. And Jerko only at first base. Watch Seth Smith. You know, remember he'd been out a few days with a bad back. They were almost trying to contemplate whether they're going to put him on the DL yesterday. But he made the start and slipping out on this wet grass, not good. Jed Jerko should be at second base. Yes, he should be. There's no excuse for that. So Jerko with two outs, standing at first, and here's Yadier Molina. Here's the 0 1. One ball and one strike. And 
Molina. A base hit out to left. Jerko should have scored. I say if he was on second base, he would have scored on that one. I, mean, I, I know the score. It's 9 1. And uh, the team is down by eight runs, and, and you can say whatever you want, but there's no excuse that he's not at second base. Nope. I mean, you know, yeah, it's major league level. You think you're going to catch that pop up, but, you know, if you run, you never embarrass yourself. So base hit for Molina. Runners at first and second, and it brings in Aledmis Diaz. And again, when you talk to major league coaches, you know, ask them do players know a certain thing, and they'll tell you never assume. Or the same thing for Jerko right there. Never assume that ball's going to be caught. Be hustling. One ball and one strike. Runners at first and second. And the next two, Diaz. Wade Miley from a small town in Louisiana. And as he describes it, I grew up in the sticks. Grew up hunting, fishing, and watching the Braves on TBS. As Diaz. Pops it up. And the catch is made by Jonathan Scope. The Cardinals strand two. And it's 9 1. Or leading St. Louis here at Camden Yards. At least in between innings, watch Jerko will go talk to Mike Matheny and explain that we think he's saying he thought it was a foul ball, but at least he's aware that he knew he should have been at second base. Hunsu Kim here in the bottom of the third. Breaking ball, a good one from Tyler Lyons. Here comes another. And another good one. He's got a good breaking ball. One and two the count. Breaking ball and just missed.
Here's a 2 2. And a strikeout of Kim. Here's a look at this Scott Coolball, and that name may re, uh, ring a bell for a lot of baseball folks. He is the brother of Mike. Mike was hit by a line drive as a first base coach in the minor leagues. He passed away. That was in 2007. He was working at an affiliate for the Colorado Rockies. And because of that, that's why we now see the first base and third base coach wearing helmets. But that's unfortunately a sad story. Uh, Scott Coolball and uh, his brother that passed away. A lot of awareness has been raised with safety issues in the game because of that. That particular season, you might recall, as Hardy looks at a strike, the Rockies went to the World Series, and Mike, his wife, was due with their third child in October. The players actually voted him a full share, which was roughly around $250,000, $300,000. But uh, they've made it a mission to try to really promote safety and awareness in the game of baseball from Little League on up. Sad story, but uh, first and third base coaches now wearing the helmets because of that. Ali Marmol next to David Bell, the first base coach of the Cardinals, Mike Schilt. It is mandatory now up and down all levels of baseball to do that. A swing and a miss, and back to back strikeouts for Tyler Lyons. It's three in a row for Tyler. He got the final strikeout to end the second inning. One more note about uh, Scott Coolbaugh. He's the hitting coach for the Orioles. His son, Tyler, was an infielder and was uh, among the draft class for the Orioles this year. I think, Dan, in a couple of years, you know, you see the wear the ear flaps, but I think, uh, like a lot of the Cardinal players, just a precautionary, I think you can see the face mask. I don't know if it, it'll necessarily be mandatory, but I think it'll be highly recommended. Remember, it used to be no helmet, then it was helmets without an ear flap, and some of the players do have the ear flap, as in this case, Seth Smith. On the ear that's facing the pitcher. Right. And the other is open. And they went to those ear flaps, and there was a grandfather clause. You know, and remember, I didn't have to wear one because you know, we thought it would hinder our eyesight or something or too heavy. Think about the days in early days where we didn't wear a batting helmet, period. That's like Don Zimmer got hit in the head and had metal plate inserted in his head. One two is hit out of play. Smith is grounded out and lined out both times to second base. Into the shift, and there's Jerko, and he makes the play. One, two, three, go the Orioles, and coming up for the Cardinals, seven, eight, nine. Tommy Pham was robbed his first time up. Homer last night, he leads it off when we come back.
Your very own derby competition in the official MLB.com home run derby game on the App Store and Google Play. Swing for the fences against more than 10 million players from around the world as your favorite derby all star. Download home run derby for free today. Hard hit ball first time up for Tommy Pham. And Jonathan Scope ranging to his right took a hit away. And Pham another hard hit ball and this one is fair down into the left field corner. Lead off double Tommy Pham. This game's long from being over. Out there play hard for nine innings and see what happens. Tommy like you said second ball he's hit hard. This time he gets rewarded with the extra base hit. The Vegas native rolling <laughs> dice. Somehow that kind of is appropriate isn't it. Mm. And a pitch low to Chad Huffman. We're in the top of the fourth, 9 1 Baltimore. Scotty with a day off today for Huffman out in right field. Carpenter DHing. Mike's going to use that DH as a way of getting some guys a little off their feet. At least not playing defensively. And a ball outside. Two balls, no strikes. Rain is stopped, sunshine is out. And there's a strike. Here's a two one. Two balls and two strikes on Huffman with a runner at second base. Kept in front by Wellington Castillo. Cardinals trying to win a road series for the first time since they were in Miami. That was back in early May. Well, that's when they had the one all six games at Atlanta and then Miami. Sixty six pitches thirty three balls thirty three strikes. And the three two. Ball four to Huffman. Oops. Or is it. Oops. He's hearing it from the Cardinal bench. Chevy Fox tracks take a look. That's on black. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the strike to Paul DeYoung. You know, sometimes we talk about it. It's not the worst thing to get tossed. No, hey, sometimes it does motivate your ball club. Sometimes you want to be thrown out, and the umpire says, if I have to stay here, you will too. So one out, runner at second. No balls, one strike on Paul DeYoung. DeYoung walked his first plate appearance.
There's a high fly ball out to right center. Adam Jones is back, looks up, and it's gone. Second consecutive game and a home run for Paul DeYoung. This one to right center. Third home run of the season. A two run shot, and it's now a 9 3 Baltimore lead. That's what we're saying, you know, just keep on pecking away. Good to see DeYoung, you know, he's known in the minor leagues, have had. It was a power hitter. Rated as one of the top minor league contenders for power. Well, any ballpark going the opposite way, that's impressive. So two run homer for DeYoung. He now has driven in nine. And 22 home runs at Springfield last season. Big as the, the non walk to Huffman. Good point. So Carpenter walked and scored. It was back in the first on the air by Scope. Ball hit hard by Molina. One ball, two strikes. He's trying to make it 11 games in a row with a base hit. Carpenter and Dexter Fowler both had success against Miley. Put their two numbers together, it'd be 15 for 27. Coming into today's action. Outside. Strike low end of the strike zone has been given to Wade Miley. We know Carpenter has such a great batting eye. We'll see where this one was. Better than the other one to Huffman. Definitely a strike. So four strikeouts for Wade Miley. And a breaking ball strike to Dexter Fowler. One and one. Fowler has struck out and also grounded out. Cardinals this inning a double by fam into the corner and left Huffman struck out on a low strike two run homer by DeYoung Carpenter called out on strikes on a pitch that was low and the 2 2 Fowler a swing and a miss and Miley strikes out the side and five today Paul DeYoung with a home run to right center. Sweet swing, his third in his young major league career. It's 9 3.
As you know, Dan, his first start in the major league since 2010 when he was with the New York Yankees. Had a chance to talk to him a little bit before today's game, and I got to tell you, Dan, he was grinning from ear to ear. I said, hey, you nervous about this? He goes, no, but he's really anxious. He said, I wanted to get this game started, which is several hours before the first pitch of today's game, but a great story to see him get back into the big leagues, Dan. Picked up his first hit since 2010 on the recent homestand. Here's Machado looks at a strike. Tyler Lyons in relief of Adam Wainwright who went an inning at two thirds. And Lyons has struck out three thus far. And wouldn't it be great if Tyler Lyons is the last pitcher the Cardinals used today. Do that in the American League with a DH. I'm not sure you could extend him out that much. I'm hoping. But it does give you that opportunity, you know, that you know, maybe maybe you give him four or five innings. Sure. You know. That's within reason for yeah. sure. One two pitch. Pulled foul. Derek Lulaquist. Cardinals thought that uh, not going to get this type of start from Adam Wainwright. But that's baseball. One two pitch. Machado hammers it fair inside the third base line. Into the left field corner. And a leadoff double. Right today, inning in two thirds, nine runs on seven hits, struck out one, walked one, but he gave up the three homers that really did him in. Most he's ever given up in a game. He's done that a handful of times to three home runs, but the shortest outing of his career. Saw some of those pitches just definitely right in the middle of the plate. You know, a couple hangers from the curveball, but you know, really not away or in. This ballpark, boy, it's hard to pitch that way. Here's Adam Jones. He did not pick up a bat until he was 12 years old. Went to a Padres game. He's from that area. And he said he fell in love watching the game and watching Tony Gwynn. He actually signed to play at San Diego State for Tony Gwynn. Became a sandwich pick by Seattle. And here he is in the big leagues. Shoots that foul. That's why it's important to have guys like Dexter Fowler and Adam Jones and so many African Americans to really get so many of those talented young players to play the game of baseball. You know, there's other sports, but you know, basketball in 20 years. Of the former players don't want their kids to play. Like every mother, grandmother is worried about their kids and they playing football. Base hit into center field. And holding at third, Machado. Runners at the corners and nobody out. Adam Jones with a home run. He's been hit by a pitch. And now a single to center field. Hit hard, one hop here. Extra gets it back in, but with the big lead, they held conservative over at third base by the, their coach. Here's Mike Trumbo, solo home run to center back in the first, and a base hit to right, run scored in the second. Swing and a miss and a ball that gets away. It's not a foul tip. Breaking ball that lands in the stands and because of that Machado scores. Take 
take a look at this. Swings at it. Gets by Yachty. And goes into the stands. The breaking ball. Almost hit his back foot too. A lot of times how you throw that breaking ball. And you're throwing it for that back foot. So makes it 10 to 3. Trumbo looks at a strike and it's nothing in two. Wainwright's ERA came in at 4.73. And because of the rough outing, it's up now back to 5.75. 0 2 pitch. Good pitch. And a strike out of Trumbo, number four this afternoon for Tyler Lyons. Good breaking ball here. This Trey Mancini. Double to left center, picked up a couple of RBIs, now up to 37. And he's tied with Jonathan Scope for the team lead. Here's the 0 1. Padres are playing the Brewers today. Milwaukee with a 3 2 lead. That's in the top of five. Eric Thames, three consecutive games with a home run. Today, the third. He had the walk off last night. Beat the Cardinals the other day. He had two straight for the Cardinals in that game, games three and four. That fourth game, it happened in the top of the ninth of a Sungwan O. Walk off home run yesterday. Cubs are at the Pirates. Jake Arrieta against Ivan Nova. And the Pirates lost last night. That was their third loss in June while leading in the ninth inning. Dodgers now a 6 2 lead in the bottom of the third against Cincinnati. That breaking ball is nasty from Lions. Unlimited baseball break. There's strikeout number five for Tyler Lyons. Eric Thames walk off home run in the tenth. Two straight game winning home runs. And the Diamondbacks have been hot. One game behind the Rockies for first place. And they have won five straight. 42 and 26 their record. Our next road trip is just three games. And it takes us out west to Arizona. Hit out to deep left center. Fowler looks up and it's gone. Home run scope his 12th of the year. He's three for three. Fourth home run. He's got three RBIs now with this two run blast. RBI earlier. All right. Up over the middle of the plate. This ballpark can't contain anything. Fourth home run of the day for Baltimore. 12 to 3 our score. Wellington Castillo walked and struck out. Ball and one strike. Yeah. 
Curveball. And it's two and two. Castillo is swinging a miss. Lyons strikes out the side. That's six today for Tyler Lyons. But the home run by Scope, a two run shot, all Baltimore here in game two. All right, Jimmy, thanks. 12 3 our score, top of five. And a ball to Jose Martinez. He has walked and struck out. Wade Miley has allowed four hits, three runs, and struck out five along the way. The Hall of Famer Jim Palmer signed a baseball for my charity golf event. Eight times he was a 20 game winner, first ballot Hall of Famer in 1990. Jim from Scottsdale, Arizona. And he actually had a basketball scholarship to head to UCLA. Went with baseball. He made right choice. And at 23 years of age, he thought his career was over. He attended a Baltimore Bullets game. Sat with a pharmaceutical rep, gave him anti inflammatories for his right shoulder. He had a tear in his shoulder. There's the statue of Jim Palmer. And all of a sudden, he regained his mid 90s fastball, gave baseball one more shot, and I think it was the right move. Oh, yeah. There he is. High fastball pitcher. That's well hit into center field. Going back, Adam Jones. And he's got it at the edge of the track. Go big when the Cardinals go big. Coffee fountain, frozen drinks, any size drink is 50 cents. The next day at On the Run, when the Redbirds score six, keep the celebration going. Stop by On the Run tomorrow. A thirst quenching win. You earned it. Here's Jed Jerko. There's a base hit on a bloop into shallow right. And as we talked about, should have been at second base. And he's also flied out to right.
think about Palmer when you're talking about the tear that he had in his shoulder back then there were really no surgeries so you either found some way to reinvent yourself or you went home in his case found medication and I inflammatories and helped him out. Here's a one two and a strikeout of Jerko. So that's six today for Wade Miley. Moving the ball around in and out change of speeds. Jerko looking. Set number six strikeout. Here's Yadier Molina reached on an air back in the first and a single in the third. 12 3 our score, top of five. Mentioned that Wade Miley grew up, and uh, the only way he could see a major league game was watching on TBS in the Braves. What a thrill it was for him. He's rookie year, he was an all star. And he got the chance to play alongside Chipper Jones. And that was his favorite player growing up. That was when Miley was in Arizona. And as Yachty hits it down the right field line, foul. Had the power of TBS and the Superstation back then. And many, many young players. That was the only, that and say WGN was the only mechanism for them to watch. Big League Baseball. Two two. And Yachty hits it a ton into left center. This ball is gone. Long home run. Yachty and Molina went down to get it. And the Cardinals have their second home run of the day. The other by DeYoung. Number seven for Molina. He smoked that ball right there. Been on base all three times. This one was a quick trip around the bases. You never know. You're never really out of a game here. You can score and get a cricket number real quickly. But you're going to have to put up some more zeros to catch up. Makes it a 12 4 lead. Here's a lead Miss Diaz. And he hits a fly ball into right center. Jones. Makes the catch. Miley is through five. The home run by Yadier Molina. That's his seventh of the season. RBI number 24. Went down to get it. And it's 12 4 Baltimore.
Paul DeYoung shifting from second base to short. Greg Garcia at second base. Molina out of the game. And Eric Fryer is behind the plate. Hunsu Kim, J.J. Hardy, and Seth Smith. Lions came in relief of Adam Wainwright, who lasted an inning and two-thirds. And since that time, Tyler has struck out six. He's allowed four hits and three runs. Round ball to second baseman Greg Garcia. And there's one away here in the bottom of the fifth. J.J. Hardy with the RBI double to left center that scored two. That was on a one two pitch by Wainwright. And then he struck out in the third. Lions came in with two outs and a runner at second back in inning number two. The traditional long man is something you just don't see very often anymore in baseball. So much specialization now and in, in the game. That's like guys in the American League that give up six or seven runs in the first inning and get a complete game. Round ball that is foul. American League with the DH pitcher spot never comes up. You know, got off to a bad start, but weathered the storm and got a complete game out of it. But that was when complete games meant something. Well, Wainwright, it's been an up and down year. First seven starts, his ERA was about six and a half. Next four, 0 0.34. Three after that, it's at 17. Series of adjustments. Three one pitch and he walked him. Reminder we have game three for you tomorrow Lance Lynn against Ubaldo Jimenez Jimenez one and two Lynn five and three. And that's noon at St. Louis time back home on Fox Sports Midwest. Menez put back in the rotation. Not that he pitched very well out of the bullpen, but it was a situation where if he threw in the bullpen, he had to have three or four days off anyway before he could take his Knicks assignment. So. And a strike to Seth Smith, who is 0 for 3. Only one in this lineup that has not reached base for the Orioles today. Rounded out twice to the right side and a line out as well. There's a ground ball foul. Smith played at uh, Ole Miss and he was a two sport athlete in college. Reminds me of Todd Helton. Todd Helton was the backup to Peyton Manning. Seth Smith for three years was the backup to Eli and never took a snap. But had a tremendous baseball career. Now the Lions was a quarterback, state of Texas and all state. Ooh, and Lions. Those, yeah, those knee surgeries and something caught the way he was reacting and now he's walking around the mound. See that left leg kind of catching a little bit right. Yeah. When walking. Watch him after the after, pitch here. Yeah after he throws the pitch. I was forgetting about the knees and I thought maybe a back. 0 2 pitch curveball and he got him. Seven strikeouts for Lions. I mean that curveball is some kind of pitch. Very tough on the left handed batters. You can see some of these guys just don't want any part of it. Just really fooled by the pitch. 
when you have a big lead like that, they say, ah, I'll get two tomorrow. Here's Manny Machado, big day for him. Two run homer in the second. A double inside the third base line, back in the fourth, and scored on a wild pitch. Remember he struck out his first time up, the only strikeout that Wainwright had. And he kind of thought, boy, he just looks lost. Well, he didn't look lost the last two times. One ball and one strike. One and two the count 12 4 I score with two outs and the next two Manny Machado pulled foul Cardinals have been serving Manny a steady diet of breaking balls that breaking ball still could be tough on the right handers but you don't get it in far enough leave it out over the plate and it can be crushed. Ground ball that's hit to short to Young. Underhands to Garcia for the out. We head to the sixth at Camden Yards here in Baltimore. Orioles on top, 12-4. By Steel Outdoor Power Equipment. Find a servicing steel dealer at steeldealers.com or search STIHL. And by your local St. Louis area Volkswagen dealers. Been a rough day so far for the Cardinals, trailing 12 4. Wade Miley pitching into the sixth. Tommy Pham with two hard hit balls. One was up the middle that scope backhanded, recorded the out. And the other, a double into the left field corner, and scored on the two home, uh, two run homer by Paul DeYoung. Cardinals with two home runs today, five last night, seven in the series. And the one one pitch. Miley's thrown more today, more innings today than he did in his last two starts. Couldn't get out of the third. Here's a one two. One hundred pitches so far for Wade Miley. 
And it's a strikeout of Tommy Pham. What a great deal on Cardinals tickets. Phillip at Phillips 66. Eight gallons or more now until September 25. And you receive up to 50% off on a pair of tickets to a Cardinals home game. For more information, visit cardinals.com slash Phillips 66. Seven strikeouts for Wade Miley. Strike one on Chad Huffman. Probably his last inning of work. Cardinals have bullpen action. One and one to count. It's John Brebbia. Machado diving stop knocks it down but couldn't stay with it. Base hit for Huffman. You're a little surprised that Brevia is warming up in this game. The only reason I say that it wouldn't surprise me you know a week or two ago but, but now yeah his, his one role to me is increased especially after what he did the other night. No doubt. I mean that's what I'm thinking. He's one of the more reliable arms that you would turn to right now. How about DeYoung. He is the most recent Cardinal to uh, hit three home runs or more in his first 15 major league games. Hazel Baker did it back last season. Johnny Rodriguez, J. Rod in 2005, Pujols in 2001. Keith McDonald, home run McDonald, did it in 2000. I will go out on the limb and say that DeYoung will have. A career somewhere between Keith McDonald and Albert Pujols. Really went out on a limb. Well, I mean, you know, every now and then you got to do that. You got to go. State your case. Emphatically. Albert's a first ballot Hall of Famer. McDonald had three home runs. We have a. I don't even think he lasted 15 games <laughs> at the three home runs. He hit a uh, home run in his first at bat and then turned around and hit a home run in his second at bat. 2 1 pitch. Ouch. Well, you don't want to use Rosenthal or O in this game today. Tui Valala, two innings last night. Bowman, you'd love to give him some rest. Cecil had a scoreless inning last night. You use Lions and Segrist, they try to be careful with as well. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's process of elimination, but you know, Brett Cecil's starting to uh, become the reliever that uh, I think they thought that they were going to be signing. And then you've got, you talk to these. Clubs like Baltimore and clubs that uh, got a chance to see a lot of Brett Cecil, and they say he was lights out. Here's a 2 2. Late swing and a strikeout of DeYoung. That's eight today for Miley and two in the inning. Get the ball away from him. Brings in Carpenter. Hitless today does have a walk and a run scored. Only walked three in the first two innings and hasn't walked a man since. The shift on here for Carpenter. Grounded out to first and struck out. And he looks at strike one. Two. 
Miley trying to make it nine strikeouts. The 0 2 pitch. The one two pitch. Carpenter takes a ball. Outside definitely. That rung up last time. Dispute with the umpire, so does he hold a grudge? And uh, Miley doesn't get that call. Tad bit in. But the eye here of Matt Carpenter. Those are three pitches in a row the majority of the league is swinging at. Matt does have that good eye, though, doesn't he? And most of the time when he takes a pitch, it's, it's definitely a ball. 3 2 pitch, pulled foul. Runner at first is Chad Huffman. Miley at 116 pitches today. Check swing did not go. Four walks. And that might be it for Miley. Got a big lead. You've been having trouble with your starters not going deep into a ball game. So you have to be a little disappointed you couldn't complete the sixth inning. So Chevy called to the bullpen. Miley's day is through. He goes five and two thirds innings. He allows just four runs to this point. And we'll tell you who this reliever is when we come back. For Baltimore, he has made six starts this season. The ERA that's over five. Cardinals have runners at first and second, and the batter will be Dexter Fowler. Asher just put in the bullpen yesterday. Hernandez, Jimenez will make the start tomorrow, and they're trying to find another bullpen arm until they get their reliable late inning closer, closer and setup man back. Pitch very well out of the bullpen. The issue here for the Orioles, though, is that you turn around, Dexter Fowler. 
much better from this side of the plate. But Miley was on fumes. Here's a 1 0 pitch to Dexter Fowler. Foul back. It's got to be disappointing when your team gets you 12 runs and you can't get out of the sixth inning. You know, when your bullpen has been overworked, ineffective. But you know, he tried to stay with him as long as he could in that sixth inning. The pitch count was getting way up there. Struck out eight, walked four, and that didn't help. Here's a 1 1 pitch to Fowler. Fowler today has struck out twice and also grounded out to third. Here's a 2 1. 2 and 2. Jose Martinez at the on deck circle. And Fowler, it's a high fly ball out to deep left center. This may go. Three run homer, Dexter Fowler. 12th of the year, his second in as many games against the Orioles. And it's a 12 7 ball game. Dan, when you come in with men on base, the most important stat is what do you do with the first batter? First batter now has been retired two out of ten times by Asher. Pitch away from him. Couple rows deep, but deep enough to get the Cardinals right back in this game. It's now 12 7, and it brings in Jose Martinez. They've had a lot of problems in their bullpen. So close the book on Miley, five and two thirds, six runs on six hits, struck out eight, walked four, gave up two home runs. Fowler, his 12th home run of the year. RBI is 31, 32, and 33. 0 1 pitch. 0 and 2 on Martinez. Walked his first time up, struck out, and flight out. Ash was acquired from the Phillies in exchange for a player to be named later or cash considerations late in spring training. Here's the 0-2 pitch. And the one two. <laughs> two two pitch. A little bit low. Times today's game. Nobody on base. 3 2 count. We're going to throw a breaking ball. Still got to gear up and look fastball, but you're ready to adjust. Then don't chase. Like the slider. 3 2 pitch. Martinez lines it into right field. This ball is down for a base hit. So Asher has come in, allowed the three run homer, and now a single to Jose Martinez. And the batter is Jed Jerko. Right, a slider, but a 3 2 count. Starts in the middle of the plate. Good piece of hitting by Martinez going that way. Jerko is the seventh man to come to the dish. 
Roger, for the Cardinals. Roger McDowell out there, the pitching coach. Buck Walter, first year they've been together. Remember Dave Wallace? Sure. He was pitching coach here for a long time. I remember talking when he was with the Dodgers. He had Nomo and he had Fernando and he had all the you know, conglomeration of United Nations pitchers. And it was when Alan Bennis, Matt Morris, guys like that, he said, I just wish I could have five Americans that I could communicate with. They really complimented Alan Bennis. Alan would have been a really good one if he didn't have those shoulder problems. And there's a ball to Jed Jerko. Jerko is fly to right, single, and was called out on strikes back in the fifth. He pops one here. We've got a we've got a ball game the yeah. rest of the way. The 1-0. Six is a serious number and on the run tomorrow Cardinals scored six any size drink just 50 cents tomorrow and on the run. Here's a one one. Dan in this ballpark you are in. And maybe. Maybe they are made the right decision to bring in Brevia. Two balls and a strike on Jerko. Off the end of the bat, finds a hole. Jerko is safe as they throw the ball away. Backing up the catcher, Castillo. And things are getting very interesting now. Ray Garcia will be the batter. It would have been Molina's spot, but he was taken out for good reason. You know, give him a little rest, but that'll be it for Asher. He's got a place to be in this case. Backing up in case that throw gets by the first baseman. Right there at the Castillo. So that's it for Asher. So Chevy called to the pen. There's two lefties out there. We'll see the decision for Buck Showalter when we come back. Greg Garcia will be at the plate. And the Cardinals have something going, trailing 12-7. Of two lefties in the pen, the other Vidal Nuno. Lefties hitting 269 against Blyer. 12 7 our score. We're in the top of the six, couple of outs, and the first plate appearance of the day for Greg Garcia. Remember what I said the first batter they face when they come in with men on is the most important. He's retired nine of 15 first batters. 
Garcia hitting in Molina's spot. Yachty had homer today and single. Runners at first and second. And ball one to Garcia. Three and zero the count. Three and one the count. One thing you know about Garcia is not afraid to hit with two strikes. Well schooled fundamentally. Took that first one. Wouldn't be surprised unless it's right in where he's looking. And he'll take a second. And that's ball four. Base is loaded. And I mean, Buck Showalter almost sprinting out the first couple of steps of the dugout. He is hot. <laughs> So you want to be a manager, huh? Wow. I mean, he came right out. Give me the ball. See you later. On to the next. But Danny, he's really calmed down, too. Yeah. Looks like it, too. Base is loaded, and this will be our Chevy call to the pin. Eric Fryer, Buck Showalter after ball four to Greg Garcia. He's not even to the bag and he's calling for the right hander Givens. I'd say he's a little upset. So Michael Givens, 54th overall pick in 2009, good strikeout man with 32 and 32 and two thirds innings. Bases loaded, Eric Fryer at the plate. There's strike one. Now Givens has retired 22 of 29 first batters. He's allowed seven of 19 inherited runners to score. Here's the 0 1. 0 and 2. Strikes out Fryer. Cardinals strand the base is loaded, but they get a three run homer from Dexter Fowler. It's 12 7, midway through six.
banging breaking ball and a home run off of Adam Wainwright. That was Adam Jones, and then Mark Trumbo would follow back to back solo shots. The State Farm perfect pair back in the first inning. It's 12 7 our score. John Brebby is in for St. Louis. It'll be Adam Jones, Mark Trumbo, and Trey Mancini. Brebby has done a very nice job for the Cardinals so far, and our Chevy call to the pen. You and I have both have been very impressed, not only with his slider, but also with the good velocity. And last night I had spoke to Derek Wolliquist a little bit about him, and he was like, "Where was this guy? Why wasn't he in, even in big league camp?" And so, we'll give you an indication that they like what they see from him. Tyler Lyon struck out seven and three and a third. And he gave up four runs. So here we are, bottom of the sixth. Adam Jones. Two for two today. Two bowls and no strikes. The two oh pitch, a fly ball into right. Chad Huffman is there for the catch, and there's one away. Here's Trumbo. Solo home run to center back in the first. Base hit to right, run scored in the second. Struck out with a runner in scoring position in the fourth. Brebbia, the third pitcher used by St. Louis. And there's strike one. Brebbia was uh, selected by the Cardinals from the Diamondbacks in the Triple A phase of the Rule 5 draft. In December of 15. Last year's split time between Double A and Triple A. 0 and 2. O2 pitch to Trumbo and he struck him out. Good slider. Bob Gibson bobblehead is coming up part one of a two part series celebration of that 67 team. That's June 24th courtesy of AT&T. Things about Brevia too he's not overwhelmed by the big league atmosphere. Very comfortable. Ground ball hit up the middle. The young to his left. Nice play showing off some range. As he takes a hit away from Trey Mancini. Sends us to the seventh inning. Coming up for the Cardinals. It'll be Fam, Huffman, and the young.
by the Gateway Honda dealers donate a thousand dollars to the Make-A-Wish Foundation of Missouri. Top of the seventh and Tommy Pham will face Givens who struck out Fryer with the bases loaded on three pitches back in the sixth. And a fastball and a strike. See where this young man Givens be very tough on the right. He slings it up there. Good fastball, good movement with sink. That's what I was going to say, Danny. Just looks like the typical uh, Latin reliever. Got a bounce back arm. Slings the ball up there is the proper definition. Probably can do that all day. Fastball on the outside corner. He short arms it a little bit. Ball jumps on. Him. The can't miss event of the summer hits South Beach. Baseball's biggest stars take the field. The MLB All Star Game, July 11th, and it's only on Fox. Side to Huffman. Chad today with an infield hit. He is struck out looking and also grounded to third. Fastball at the knees at 97. One ball and one strike. Cardinals collectively today their lineup is struck out nine times. Out of play. 99 on the gun. One and two the count. Inside. So probably not a comfortable at bat. He slings it up there and turns his back ever so slightly and then really hides the ball, the release point. Two and two, the count. De Young on deck. Givens is 6 and 0. With ERA 2.76. This is the 30th appearance. Last year, fourth among the American League relievers, had 96 strikeouts, tied for third in the majors with eight wins as a reliever. 3 2 pitch. Oh my goodness. Knocks his glove off and makes the play. Scary, scary, scary. Just a rifle right back at him, tried to get that glove up there and knocks it off. Comes back up here and 
throws it and that was an awkward throw. Here's an only guy glove. Says he's okay. Hard racing a little bit quicker. Strike one on DeYoung. Made a really nice play going up the middle to his left at short. Showed off some range. Everything about his game has been impressive. And the 0 1. 0 and 2. That's what you're talking about. See where he is. Coming up the middle, showing great range, arm strength, going off balance, axis. Of young players in spring training. Be young. It looked like a pretty close pitch, but outside. Two balls and two strikes. DeYoung, a two run homer back in the fourth. Lifts this one high in the air out to left. Kim is under it. Time to stretch here at Camden Yards. The St. Louis Cardinals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. St. Louis Cardinals baseball is brought to you by Bud Light, famous among friends. And by Ford, the official cars and trucks of the St. Louis Cardinals. Bottom of the seventh, and it's 12 to 7. Brebia working in his second inning. Adam Wainwright in inning at two thirds. Lions three and a third. Brebia now inning number two. Cardinals have used three pitchers. Baltimore has used four. 
Starter for the Orioles went five and two thirds. That was Miley. Fryer and Garcia now into the game. We can see them five and six in the lineup. Molina was taken out. And so was Aledmis Diaz left on the bench for the Cardinals, Stephen Piscotti. There's Jonathan Scope. He is three for three. Run scored. Two RBIs and a two run homer, and that pitch is taken high. Scope, Wellington Castillo, Hunsu Kim. It was a good slider, one ball and one strike. Yeah, and it was, Brevia was originally signed by the Yankees, and then in 14 and 15, two years of independent baseball. Said he was acquired by the Cardinals when they selected him from the Diamondbacks in the Triple A phase of the Rule Five draft. Two-one pitch, ground ball that's foul. Two is hit down the left field line and it is gone. Home run for Jonathan Scope. Have a day. His second home run of the day and he's four for four. Four RBIs. The leader of the Orioles in RBIs. He's up to 40 now. And 13 home runs. But off balance, it's front foot, just one handed swing and reaches the first or second row. Right down the line. The sixth multi home run game, the career of Jonathan Scope, and here's Castillo. 0 for 2, pair of strikeouts and a walk. 13 to 7, Baltimore. Out to shallow center, Dexter Fowler under it and makes the catch. Su Kim 0 for 3. Here's a 1 0. Three guys in their lineup that haven't got a hit. Two and one to count. Well, the last team that had five home runs themselves and then the following day gave up five or more, the Boston Red Sox. And that was June 1st of 2016 to the Orioles. Hit five on June 1st, gave up seven June 2nd. And that's a base hit in the right field. Orioles with five home runs hit today. Jones, Trumbo, Machado, and Scope with two. Cardinals hit five home runs yesterday and they have three today. What's going to happen tomorrow? Joey Rickard will be the pinch runner.
J.J. Hardy at the plate. Hardy a double, two RBIs back in the second, struck out in the third and walked. Slider in there for a strike. This could be trouble as well. It's down. It's in the corner. Hardy to second. The wave and the runner record. Relay to the plate is not in time. Got it back in. Garcia's throw, a little bit up the first or the third base line, able to go around the tag. And the move by Buck Showalter to have Rickard come in and pinch run pays off. Kim probably doesn't score on that play. Seth Smith, the only one in this lineup that has not reached base, grounded to second twice, lined out, and was called out on strikes. And the slider is in there for strike one. 14 runs on 14 hits for the Orioles. Runner at second base and the 0-1 pitch. Make it 0-2. This game long enough, you're going to have games like this. Matt Bowman warming up. Here's the 0-2 pitch. It out of play. If you just joined us, it's 14 7. Teams wearing the blue uniforms throughout Major League Baseball raise awareness for prostate cancer research in this Father's Day weekend. And the 0 2 pitch. Danny hit him. So now Seth Smith is aboard. Runners at first and second. And the batter will be Manny Machado. So both teams this weekend are raising a lot of money for prostate cancer. I should say so. A lot of home runs hit. Looks like I'm on the sole of the sole of the foot after it bounced first. Machado, a two-run home run back in the second inning. Doubled inside the third base line, scored on a wild pitch. I'm not sure. I think I'd rather see a position player pitch the eighth inning than see Bowman. The Scotty is the only one available. Of course, you could have him play the field and Garcia or somebody pitch. Here's the one. Machado. Machado is jammed and it's hit out of play. A little fun in an American League game.
One and two the count. The 2 2 pitch to Machado up the middle off Brebbia. Loved by Garcia and the out. 1 4 3. If you can't catch the games on television, you can stream them live on your mobile device with Fox Sports Go. Download the app, take Fox Sports Midwest, and Cardinals baseball with you wherever you go. There's Conroy and Mike Bettini out to check on Brebbia. Like he's saying he's okay. I think his leg would have to be broken before he'd come out of a major league game. I think you're right. Been too long of a road for him to get here. Yeah, might have hit him right on the sole. And good play by Garcia. Two outs and two on. The batter is Adam Jones. Solo home run. Scored a run back in the first. Hit by a pitch in the second. Scored a run. And he lines it to Greg Garcia. So on the day now, he's two for four. Home run by Jonathan Scope. And the RBI double by J.J. Hardy to bring in Joey Rickard. 14 7 as we head to the eighth. In, in the sixth with the bases loaded struck out Fryer and had a one two three seventh inning and now pitching here in the eighth. Matt Adams with a three hit day today all extra base hits. 
He has been on fire since he got to Atlanta. 14 to 7 our score here. Carpenter a couple of walks. Rounded out to first and also struck out. Got to give him a hit. Extend his hitting streak. And it's one ball and one strike. Carpenter here and then Dexter Fowler. And Jose Martinez. Outfield is straight away. And that's fouled back. Cardinals have been out hit 14 9 in this game. And Givens came in with the bases loaded and Pryor was up. But I'm sure there's some people say, well, how could you take out Molina? How could you take out Diaz? You just have to do it sometime. You've got to give guys rest when you have a lopsided game. Still, you have major league hitters. The fifth year for Givens pitching. He was a position player before he moved to the mound. And Carpenter hits a high fly ball into center field. Adam Jones is over for the first out here in the eighth. We turn to our Nissan drive of the game and a three run homer for Dexter Fowler. This is number 12 of the season. RBI is 31, 32, and 33, and that's your Nissan drive of the game. And two in the order. The home runs and RBIs get a few other guys to start chasing them. So Father is driven in five already in this series. First time in his career, three straight games of the home run. A one pitch, low and outside, one ball and one strike. Cardinals wrap up the series here tomorrow. It's an off day on Monday, and then we'll be in Philly Tuesday night. Fowler lines it out to left for a base hit. Two hit day for Dexter. So the Julia that average keeps on crawling up there. If Martinez can't have a two hit game. Base hit to right back in the sixth. Line to center, struck out looking and walked. Started first base today with Carpenter as the DH. And there's strike one. Playing behind the runner at first with a seven run lead here in the eighth. And it's one ball and two strikes. Pitch number 32 for Givens out of their pen. So both clubs have had to extend their bullpens. Last night for the Orioles, today for the Cardinals. And yet the Orioles, with this big lead, have used more pitchers today in game two than the Cardinals. Two two pitch. And a strikeout.
third strikeout for Gibbons since he's come in this game. Only allowed one hit. Only base runner he's allowed. Cardinals have struck out 10 times in this game, and the batter is Jed Jerko. Takes a healthy cut, fouls it back. Got Lance Lynn going tomorrow. Barring a miraculous comeback. Still got a chance to win the series. The Cardinals last night, season high in runs with 11. So they pop five home runs, and it's on the flip side today. They've given up five and the opposition with 14 runs scored season high. And this is something like the 10th straight game for Baltimore that they've allowed at least five runs. And they took that base or giving it to you or not. Stolen base, but fielder's indifference. Bring it to the count. Ray Garcia at the on deck circle. In the air down the right field, or rather the first base side, and it's out of play. And we'll do it again. So Gibbons now, next pitch will be number 40. A good sign that he may not be available for tomorrow. Wouldn't be surprised if maybe another bullpen change or two for the Orioles overnight. Three two pitch now to Jed Jerko. Popped up again and that'll find the seats behind home plate. Jerko lifts it down the left field line. Eight pitches and this at bat alone for Jed Jerko. John throwing strikes, he keeps on following them off. But more pitches you see, the better chance you got to get a good one. Three two pitch. Jerko grounds it left side. That is a fair ball. Machado long throw. Wow! Manny Machado nearly from the first row of the seats with an incredible throw. A 14 to 7 game makes this kind of concentration unbelievable.
Cardinals and Reds. It's a makeup game Monday, June 26. That day, 30,000 fans, 16 and older, receive a Carlos Martinez and Matt Carpenter double bobblehead, courtesy of SSM Healthcare and Cardinal Glenn and Children's Hospital. Visit cardinals.com slash promotions for more info. Chevy call to the pen, and it's Matt Bowman for the Cardinals here in the bottom of the eighth. 33rd appearance for Bowman. Wainwright, Lions, Brebbia, and now Bowman. Trumbo on the first pitch, pops it up, it's playable. Martinez in foul territory, and that's the first out. You just hope that Bowman has a real efficient inning. Just a tune up. Brings in the first baseman, Trey Mancini. RBI double to left center back in the second inning. That scored two. Grounded out to third, grounded to short, and struck out. The first pitch to him. Mancini was between double A and A ball last year. Racing for it, steps and throws, and Martinez can't pick it. Bowman does a good job just hustling over here, just saws him off, gets to it, standing flat footed. Felt like he didn't have time for the crow hop to get him in line, and the short hops. Martinez, Jose, still working and trying to find himself at first base. That 6 5 frame, you thought he could have stretched out and got that ball instead of standing flat for him trying to bear backhand it. Here's Scope, four for four today. Jonathan Scope is our Budweiser player of the game. Couple of home runs, two singles. He's driven in four and scored three. Our Budweiser player of the game, the second baseman of the Orioles. It was the 14th hit in this game for Baltimore. Here's a 1 1 pitch. That off speed pitch there. And the 1 2 2 scope. Round ball that's foul. Make that 15 hits for the Orioles. So they've out hit the Cardinals 15 10. They lead 14 7 here at the bottom of the eighth. One two pitch in the dirt. Scope from Curacao played for the Netherlands in the World Baseball Classic. Twenty years ago, there were no players from Curacao. And Andrew Jones was the first. The 2-2 pitch. Take advantage of this opportunity to work on that splitter a little bit. Okay. 
He doesn't like to call that a splitter. It's a splitter grip, but but that's the change up. Right? Yeah. yeah. The 2 2 pitch. Ground ball. Bowman lets it go. Glove by DeYoung. Only play to first. Two outs. Mancini to second. And it's Wellington Castillo. First time that Scope has been retired in this game. For three, walked his first time up, and he had been part of the fun. And a pitch up and in. Lance Lynn and Ubaldo Jimenez tomorrow. On the air at noon with the pregame show. Here's a 1 0 pitch. Three one pitch. Three and two. Pitches are thrown in this game. There have been a ton of foul balls. About 25 hits. Here's one error. Three two pitch again to Wellington Castillo. And he walked him. Runners at first and second. First walk issued by Matt Bowman. Caleb Joseph. Pinch run and the catcher. Day for these catchers today, right? So two outs. Joey Rickard came in as a pitch runner back in the seventh. After the base hit by Kim. Scored on the RBI double by JJ Hardy. He's on deck. No balls and one strike. 
And the next to Ricker. Minimum 20 pitches for Bowman. That pitch, one and two. Starters. Here's a one two pitch to Rickard. Popped up. And Fryer is over and runs out of room. Check yourself, see where you are. Reach into the dugout. Don't get too much help on that side. Here's a one two pitch. Bases will be loaded. That's the second batter the Cardinals have hit here today. And the other was Seth Smith in the seventh. Rather, the third batter hit. Adam Jones was hit as well. None of them intentional, but just taking off, running inside. Bases loaded for J.J. Hardy. Bowman shaking his head, not happy with himself. First pitch of the inning, got a pop out, then an infield hit by Mancini. Scope grounded out, walked to Castillo, hit batter. That pitch is up, and it's turning out to be what the Cardinals did not want to see a long inning here for Matt Bowman. That's why I almost said put in a position player. Have a little levity to this game. Here's a 1 0 pitch. One ball and one strike. All of a sudden, you get one of your reliable relievers, Bowman, that throws so many pitches. You question whether he'd be available tomorrow. To the backstop, and a run will score. That makes it a 15 7 Baltimore lead. Well, we'll request to come out and talk to Coleman. Let him get frustrated. Might overthrow this pitch.
Runners at second and third, and then the 2 1 pitch now to J.J. Hardy. 2 and 2. Three and two. And he already has two doubles and three RBIs in this game. Also a walk. It's a fly ball into deep right field near the corner. And the catch is made, it looks like, by Huffman out of our sideline but umpire makes the call with a catch better look here 15 7 Baltimore All right, thank you. It's our Chevy call to the pen. Brad Brock is in 6'6, 215 pounder. And he's been a good one. They picked him up for a minor league right handed pitcher from San Diego in 2013. And he's proven to be a reliable reliever. Last year, 71 appearances. He went 10 and 4 with an ERA just over 2. First batter is Greg Garcia. And there's strike one. Since a Britain, he was really kind of taken over as the ninth inning man. Oh, and two. And usually, when you score seven runs, you got a pretty good chance of winning. But trailing by eight. Ten hits to go along with those seven runs. But as the guys mentioned back in the studio, short outing for Wainwright, put it behind him. Cardinals will go with Lance Lynn tomorrow here in game three. Well, that's it. I mean, you, if you end up losing this one, you got a chance to win the series. Now we're in Wainwright. This is a, an easier forgotten game than something that's two to one, three to two.
Reds have gotten five walks in this game too. 2-2 two -two pitch. And Garcia lifts a fly ball into center. Adam Jones makes the catch. <laughs> Cardinals had been 9 and 0 when they scored seven or more runs. It looks like that'll change in this ball game. Lynn tomorrow for the Cardinals. I would expect him that uh, Lynn has had uh, back to back five inning appearances. Not many pitches. He should be strong and ready to roll tomorrow. Right. And if anything, it'll teach you don't serve the ball up to where he can be hit out of the ballpark. Here's the 0 1 pitch. And Fryer hits it out of play. Key at bat in this game, if you will, was back in the sixth inning. Fryer came up with the bases loaded and struck out on three pitches against Givens. He really settled this game down. Sure did. He took control of it. Ground ball to third, Machado. And there's two down. Final home for the Cardinals is Tommy Pham. Two outs, nobody on, and Pham up there hacking. Strike one. Round ball two second bobbled by scope and the Orioles take game two by the final of 15 to seven. Any tough game but like I said these games like this you know they're easily forgotten you come out and ready to play tomorrow still try and win that series. Wainwright will think about it a lot more than some of the others but you'll try and figure out a way to come out the next time and get a win. 15 to 7, the final.